Um, there was an interesting question that just came in. Are, do you, are you considered to still have Chiari if one of the tonsils is above the frame and magnum, but maybe the other is not? What, yes. what happens there? Yes. That's called an asymmetric Chiari. Okay. If, so if that's found pre-decompression, I imagine you would decompress, but if, what if that's found after the initial decompression surgery? Well, the question is, is the person still having symptoms? Remember, your, your MRI has uh, cuts that are typically anywhere from three to five millimeters apart. So within that three to five millimeters, there can be pathology we just don't see. And a lot of the time when we go to surgery, we find that in measuring the cerebellar tonsils, they are herniated much farther than the lowest extent on the MRI because the slices miss the lowest point. Um, when we have people with very long herniations, you know, more than 20 millimeters, I almost always see those um, asymmetric. In other words, one side is dominant, longer, and fills the fourth ventricle. And then the other side is just kind of pushed out of the way. It may be long, but typically they're not equally just long and filling the fourth ventricle. Wow, that's interesting. Um, there was a, a really good question. Um, <laughs> can a steering truly be idiopathic and have no cause? So what's the deal with idiopathic steering? <laughs> Well, so <laughs> idiopathic really we didn't find a cause, right? Um, but uh, yes, you know, we can investigate and do studies and uh, not find a cause. But when I have a patient with a syrinx, you know, first I look at the um, Chiari area, the frame and magnum, uh, the occiput down to C2. And I look for a tethered spinal cord, which can also cause a serum. Um, we look for any suggestion of a tumor uh, in the uh, spinal cord. If we don't see any of those, um, trauma can also cause a syrinx. Um, if the person hasn't had a known trauma, I would suggest they probably have one that they had forgotten about, <laughs> a car accident. Um, you know, something that didn't seem like much at the time, but over time a syrinx developed. Um, there was a similar question that came up in the chat sort of related to that trauma question. Have you seen previously sim uh, asymptomatic patients become symptomatic after that trauma? So concussion or whiplash, um, even something that might seem small, but was a real trauma to the core of the brain? Yes, that's common. That's common. A lot of patients have Chiari and never knew they had Chiari until they were in a car accident, a fall, an assault, um, you know, hit by a bottle in the cafeteria is my most recent story. I um, mean, these things happen. And then suddenly the person has, you know, all these Chiari symptoms. I, um, what happens is that the person, you know, develops some swelling, sometimes some bleeding in the brain and around the base of the skull, and then develops adhesions and those block the flow of fluid at the base of the skull. So where the person previously had some fluid sneaking around the Chiari, now they don't. Right. And um, you know those um, problems don't necessarily go away with time. Right. You, were, you were skating by on what you had, but something kind of- Oh, no, just another thing about um, the syrinx, mm. looking for a Chiari. Um, a lot of the time, there will be a blockage at the area that is not sort of classic Chiari. I mean, maybe the person has um, two, three millimeters uh, tonsillar herniation instead of, you know, more. Maybe the person has uh, something about the fourth ventricle that just looks funny, looks like mass, looks like adhesions between the brainstem and the tonsils. And when I have explored those in patients with syrinx, I have found an arachnoid veil, a blockage of the fourth ventricle, something that was causing the syrinx. Oh. And most of the time the syrinx went away or got better. That's interesting too. <laughs>